Hello everyone, welcome back to another Blu-ray review. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Barbara Stanwyck Blu-ray Collection box set that is put out by Kino Lorber. And as you can see right away, there is a lovely picture of Barbara Stanwyck here on the front. But before I get into this set, I do want to commend Kino Lorber for putting out these sets. They are putting out quite a few of these kind of actor actor centric box sets. They've been putting out film noir box sets. They've been putting out western box sets, and they are a pleasant, pleasant surprise. And this one is going to be accompanied by several others. There are a few that are out already. One, I believe, is a collection of Audie Murphy films. The other, I believe, is a collection of Deanna Durbin films. And there are several other ones coming. There's a Carol Lombard set that's coming. There is a Tony Curtis box set that's coming. And there is one of one of my favorite actors of all time in Cary Grant. That one is also coming. But this one is, of course, about the great Barbara Stanwyck. And what is interesting about Barbara Stanwyck for me specifically is that I discovered her, I think, in one of her more well-known films, which I think is where a lot of people discovered her. And that is in Double Indemnity, which came out in 1944, directed by Billy Wilder, starring Fred McMurray. I also uh, fell in love with her in several other films, specifically the two screwball comedies in Ball of Fire, as well as The Lady Eve. Ball of Fire still needs a blurry release. Lady Eve is getting a release through the Criterion Collection, which I will be getting, of course, because I just love that movie. Uh, Barbara Stanwyck is someone who is just an all-time classic actress. Her career spanned all the way from the 1920s all the way to the mid-1980s, a 60-year career. She had success on both the silver screen, you know, in movies, as well as having success in television. She actually won a couple of Emmys. She was nominated for, I think, four Oscars as well. So she was quite critically loved throughout her career. She never won an Oscar in competition, but I think she did win an honorary Oscar. And I believe she also won an honorary Golden Globe as well. So she had a really long and fantastic career. I've always been a big fan of hers ever since I got into classic cinema. But let's take a look here, a closer look here on the cover if you didn't see it in the first place. Gorgeous picture here. Um, and on the back we have, of course, the three movies as well as a, you know, a kind of blurb about the contents of the box set and the movies. As you can see here, they have the posters reprinted, and they also use the posters as the cover art for the Blu-rays, which I kind of really like as well, just because um, it's simple and it's classy, and it's not like one of those terrible Photoshop covers that we're so used to seeing nowadays. And as you can see here on the bottom, there is a Universal Pictures logo, because I believe all of these box sets, or at least this one specifically, is done so in partnership or some type of licensing deal with Universal. A lot of these more boutique labels like Kino Lorber, like Olive Films, like Criterion, um, they tend to uh, get the distribution license from these companies and they last for several years and then sometimes they lapse and then these these tend to go out of print. So first up here is the film starring Barbara Stanwyck and Joel McRae and this is Interns Can't Take Money. Uh, Joel McRae and Barbara Stanwyck uh, teamed up on several films throughout the early part of, of her career. And she was actually a big proponent of getting Joel McRae to be in this film. She really went out on a limb to get him to be her co-star because they had worked together previously. And this is a, a short film set, runs 79 minutes. It's a film that is the first film in the Dr. James Kildare franchise, if you will. This part would be recast with Lou Ayres in subsequent films, but this was the first film in that franchise. And it's an interesting short film that's dealing with like this young intern who's having his morals compromised because he, he kind of gets into it with the mob. And he also meets um, a young character that's portrayed by Barbara Stanwyck. She has some personal issues and he kind of gets roped into that. And of course, there's this whole romantic chemistry between the two that develop. And it's a really delightful movie. Not a great movie. That's the one thing about this box set. It's kind of her lesser movies. But if you're a big fan of Barbara Stanwyck, you kind of need to, you know, get it or at least watch them in some way just because, you know, if you're a fan of someone, you want to see all of their work typically. But let's take a look here on the back. And unfortunately, as you can no doubt tell here, there are not a lot of special features. That seems to be one of the 
A kind of recurring issues with a lot of Kino Lover and Kino Lover Studio Classics releases is they're not very heavy with when it comes to special features. And I think for the most part, it's just enough to have these films in HD quality or at least in much better quality than we've seen on VHS or even DVD. And these films, they're not great, great you know, high quality, you know, 2K, 4K restorations, or at least I couldn't find any of that information on the packaging and I couldn't find it really in any review online. And usually when it comes to things like that, they want to advertise it because that's a selling point for a lot of, you know, cinephiles and collectors like myself. So as you can see, nothing in the way of special features, but I might as well read them out. This has an audio commentary by film historian, Dr. Eloise Ross. And of course there's trailers. Taking a look here on the inside, it's just the plain Kino Studio Classics uh, disc that you saw if you saw my Ida Lupino collection review. And yeah, there you go. No real frills here. Um, yeah, Black and White came out 1937, 79 minutes. And it's kind of a breeze to watch. And uh, next up here is uh, another Barbara Stanwyck and Joel McRae film. And this is The Great Man's Lady. And this is a bit of a period piece. Actually, it is a period piece. And this film... Um, is of course also in black and white came out in 1942 it is 90 minutes long it is the longest film in the box set and I kind of like these you know 1930s 1940s films they're relatively short they're easy to watch um, unless of course you know you're diving into some long epic like Gone with the Wind or something like that then of course things take more time but these films are relatively easy to watch so you can kind of binge them back to back to back depending on what your schedule is like but this film is about, of course, Barbara Stanwyck and Joel McRae once again playing the, this couple. Uh, Joel McRae is kind of a frontiersman, and they meet and they uh, they get married uh, very very quickly, and they have kind of a a whirlwind marriage. You know, they're trying to found this town, but they also are trying to you know just get by. And of course, this is set in, I believe, the uh, mid nineteenth century, late nineteenth century. So it's that kind of a period piece and what ends up happening is essentially Barbara Stanwyck is you know the great lady behind the man and you get this kind of epic multi-decades you know story within 90 minutes and that's kind of the, the problem with it, is everything's really really rushed and and all of those things it's not a bad movie in any regards Joel McRae and uh, Barbara Stanwyck are fantastic in it and it's a really interesting movie and it came out in 1942, so you're getting kind of like the pre-double indemnity films, and it's kind of interesting just to see where you know Barbara Stanwyck's career was going before she got she got that quintessential role that I think a lot of people know her for. So let's take a look on the back. As you can see, once again, nothing really in the way of special features other than an audio commentary, but plenty when it comes to the description of the movie. Though they're really trying to sell you on it. Once again, there's an audio commentary by film historian Dr. Eloise Ross and a theatrical trailer. Opening it up inside, once again, the plain disc art of The Great Man's Lady. And what is interesting is that The Great Man's Lady is directed by William Wellman. William Wellman is a really well-known classic era film director. I have several of his films where he really got a lot of his claim to fame, was doing a lot of pre-code films, and his pre-code films pushed the boundaries so much that it was kind of one of the one of the several reasons where the you know the Hayes production code was instilled because he was someone who kept pushing the envelope when it came to content in his films. And this is just another William Wellman film to add to my collection. Lastly is kind of the more fun film of the lot, in my opinion. And this is Barbara Stanwyck and Robert Cummings in The Bride Wore Boots. Kind of a silly title, kind of a silly movie. This film came out in 1946, also of course in black and white, and it runs 86 minutes long. Let's take a look here on the back. And on the back here, you can see that this actually has no special features whatsoever, not even a commentary, which is kind of unfortunate, but at least you get the movie in HD quality. And taking a look here on the inside is once again just the plain disc from Kino Warber as well as all of the other markings. 
So that is pretty much it for the Barbara Stanwyck collection. I kind of hope that they put out another one, actually. I don't know which films they have the rights to and which films they don't, but I know that the Carol Lombard set is being called Volume 1, so that leads me to believe we're getting more than one Carol Lombard set in this series. And I really love this series of box sets that they're putting out because they are very affordable and the films that they're bringing out aren't available on Blu-ray in the past. So if anything, you're just expanding your collection and I just love collecting classic movies. Hopefully these sets will get kind of more special features or perhaps will get even better, you know, restorations and remasters and stuff like that because they're not really advertising that so far. And But granted, this is the first set that I've gotten of these. So who knows, you know, each set may be different. So that has been my review of the Barbara Stanwyck collection blu-ray box set put out by Kino Lorber. If you like this video, please check out the other videos on my channel and please subscribe.